Proverbs chapter 6, verse 1 through 5, has to deal with cosigning, surety. A warning against cosigning alone. It's plain and simple that if a person needs to have a co-signer, that should be all flagged because their credit is not well. My son, again, it, it's Solomon speaking to his son, God speaking to us. If thou, if thou be a surety, again, that's, that's a loan. You, you are going to help someone by stating your name, your claim, your reputation, your character on them to get a loan. And if they don't pay off the loan, it comes after you. If thou be surety for a friend, you know what I find out in life, even amongst Christians, Many who are your friends don't turn out to stay your friends. And there's nothing worse time to have a friend and, and, and co-sign for him and find out later on he, he doesn't become your friend no more and you got to pay his debt. If thou hast stricken thy hand, handshake, and that's how business used to be done at, at a handshake with a stranger. That right there, right off the bat, you, you don't, with a stranger, make any loans or any payment options. Thou art snared, that means it's a trap. You've been entrapped. With the words of thy mouth. You better hold to the words of your mouth. Today is a signature. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. And if that friend or stranger defaults, you said you will cover. You may never thought you have to cover. You would think be the last thing you would have to do, but if it happened, and the thing is, okay, he can be your friend. You take you take my life. I had me a good promising job, I thought. I've had to I had to travel twelve miles one way to go to work. Our car wasn't well. We went and got a used car. We had to finance it. Hey, we prayed and, and we sought God and seemed like the opportunity and we got the car. A couple months down the road, I lost my job. I'm still paying. I wish I wasn't, but I have to. If I defaulted and somebody signed and backed me up, I could put them on the spot if I couldn't make the payment. Do this now, not later. My son, and deliver thyself when thou art come into the hand of, a, of thy friend. Go humble thyself and make sure thy friend. You better make a surety not of not of a payment. But you better make a surety that is your friend. Give not sleep to thy eyes, nor slumber to thy eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe. From the hand of the hunter as a bird from the hand of the fowler get out of it if all possibility get out what you just got yourself into and if not 
You got to hold yourself until that bill is paid. Don't do it again. I will never sign for any friend. I won't sign for my children. I won't sign anybody in my family. I had a Christian one time. She wanted me to sign papers for, for her husband's bail bonds. No, I'm not doing it. No. The Bible says no. And if you do, you're a fool. Now, we're taking verse 4 and 5 as sleep, and, you know, you made a surety. Get going. Get to the friend. Make it short. Don't sleep on it. Now we're going to take verse 4 and 5. We're going to move it to the slugger. Go to the ant. That's the only time and the first time ant shows up in the Bible. Go to the ant, thou slugger. And he probably won't do it because he's too much of a slugger. Consider her ways. You know, why does it say her? Because when you see the ants out there working, every ant you see out there that's working is a female ant. Interesting. And be wise. You can learn from an ant. I believe it's Job that says, ask the animal. Every child in their lifetime should have an ant farm. I know they don't last long, but, you know, watch and do how the ants do. Solomon says, watch the ant. Which have no guide. It's no leader. Overseer or ruler. There's no demand from another. There's no one to check on. There's no supervisor of ants. When you're out there watching ants, there's no ant comes up and he's got a white hat. And one ant that will find some a way when he finds a food source, he will leave a trail and that's what the ants follow. Back and forth to their ant hole. There's no ant saying, okay, you go over there and get that, that picnic and you go over there and get. But they know what they're doing. A quinky dinky of evolution. I trolled not. Provided herd meat in the summer. And gather food in the harvest. She farms. She works. She lays up. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard, lazy man? When that when wilt thou rise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of hands to sleep, a snooze alarm. And there are people who just sleep. I'm not talking medically. I'm talking about there are people out there and the government pays them and all they do is just sleep. So shall thy poverty, thy poverty. God says in the Bible, you don't work and you sleep around all day. You're supposed to be in poverty. You're not supposed to be going to the grocery store and get a carriage full of meat and good food. And you're going to have to give an account to that. In the New Testament, the Bible says, a man not ought to eat if he doesn't work. If America is a Christian nation, why is she helping people who don't work? Why is she in violation of Proverbs chapter 6? And when you give a check to a lazy bum... Of taxpayers who, who earn that money, everybody involved with that check given to that bum, including that bum, are going to have to give an account to God saved or lost. 
Meanwhile, those who do work are having a hard time surviving, a hard time making on, on minimum wage. And you got lazy bums who don't do nothing for a living and make out well. That's not a Christian nation. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth. Man that travels has no home. He has no secure future. He has what he carries. And the one of as an armed man. An armed man, an army man. He wants to be home. He wants to have security. He doesn't have it. Another subject, verse 12. A naughty person. Ooh, would have been naughty or nice. Jeremiah says, I see naughty fig. And then he says, I see evil fig. And when I grew up as a child, you know, isn't he just being a naughty child? Not a Bible definition. A wicked, evil person. A naughty person. A wicked man. Walketh with a forward mouth, a wicked, vile mouth. That's 21 times in the Bible and only one New Testament reference, 1 Peter 2.18. The naughty person and the wicked man both have a most wicked mouth. I don't think naughty is cute. He winketh with his eyes, you know, <laughs> I start seeing people start winking at me and say, okay, I know who to avoid. And I've seen Christians in churches do it. So give you that wink. He speaketh with his feet. Say, what on earth does that mean? He's a verb. As wicked as he is, he takes his feet and go does the wickedness. And he teaches with his finger. He shows you. He points. Some people talk with their hands. He's action. He ain't that slugger when it comes to sinner. Forwardness is in his heart. He devises mischief continually. He soweth discord. Now, one other place that word shows up is in, we're going to read it in, in a moment in verse 19, but it's the first time it shows up. We will see in verse 19. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. That would be also the Antichrist reference, Daniel 11, 45, and Revelation 19, 19, and Revelation 20, verse 9. Because the Antichrist, according to Thessalonians, has a forward mouth. He speaks against God and God's people. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. Without remedy. That'd be like a doctor say, okay, you're sick. You got a cancer. Oh, okay, I got a cancer. What can I do about it? Absolutely nothing. It's terminal. And that verse right there shows even God is not going to help. You're so evil and vile and wicked. It may get to a point and some people, and I know preachers don't like this, what I'm saying, but it could get in a point in somebody's life, saved or lost, that God says, I've had enough of it. When it came to Judah, God told Jeremiah, don't even pray for them. I know people don't like Jeremiah because he preaches about the Christmas tree. I don't know when the last time I ever heard the book of Jeremiah in, in a church. 16 to 19. These six things does the Lord hate? Ooh. 
erase the hate. You know what the world wants? They don't want that loving God to have hate. He's to love all our sins. After all, doesn't he love all sinners and hate the sin? Really? God hates the sin but loves the sinner. Then how is it if you don't have the Son, you'll face the wrath of God? How is it if you reject Jesus Christ, a man goes into hell and just goes, hey, hey, God hates your sin, but he loved the sinner. Go ahead, keep on coming up with nonsense. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look. Pride. That look. How can he? Me? Had a woman today. You mean to tell me in the Bible says only one way? How can it be one way? What the Bible says. God doesn't care what you think. A lying tongue. Well, which lie? Do you tell your children there's a Santa Claus, an Easter Bunny, a Tooth Fairy? Do you get up in the pulpit and tell preacher stories and you make the story like it happened to you? I've known plenty of preachers to do that. I've been in one, two, three, four, five. I've been over seven churches. And it's amazing how the pastors of those churches, all of them had the same story happen to them. About the third or fourth or fifth pastor, I'm like, and then when I went to when I went to seminary and college and learned about the Bible, I hear those illustrations like, uh-huh. When you say something that's not the truth, guess what it is? It's a lie. Whether polka dot, yellow, white, yellow, green, cross your fingers, cross your toes. A lie is a lie and God hates it. I'll tell you another one. I was, you know, I'm amazed. I learned a lot in school, but I learned many things. That I remember one of my classes, it was... And it was in pre preparation for the ministry, and they said, and they told me that, you know, all eye, all heads bowed, all eyes closed. I see that hand, and there's no hand get, got raised at all. Well, you know what they're doing? They're trying to say, I see that hand, so the next hand will go. Somebody figures, if, if somebody else raises their hand, then I'll raise my hand. No one's looking. There are preachers in the pulpits that are out like outright liars. And you don't want me to give their name. My very first preacher was an outright liar. Every time he tells his stories of life, and my wife Lisa and I'd be like, Well, that's not how he told it the first time. Well, that's not how he said it was last month. If you're going to be a liar, you've got to be with a great memory. Because you got to remember the lies you told. If it's the truth, there's nothing to remember. It's the truth. And God hates it. And by the way, some of, some of those ministers behind pulpits are of the devil, according to 2 Corinthians 11. And the devil is the father of lies. And hands that shed innocent blood actively in murder. God hates when a man takes another man's life in murder. Innocent blood. They've done no guilt, no crime. 
a heart that devises wicked imagination. Well, you know, I didn't do it. I just thought about it. God hates it. Jesus goes so far to say, if a man looks upon a woman to lust after her in his heart, has already committed adultery. That's how much God hates it. You don't have to be active. You just got to think about it. How's your thought life? <clears throat> That's another thing I haven't really heard out of pulpit. I haven't heard the rebuking of sin of your thoughts. Saved or lost, your thoughts are going to have to give an account one day. Feet that, that are swift running to mischief. And we just ran into that guy over here. Verse 13, he winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet. If you're so quick to go running to do something wicked and vile, God hates that. What do you think God thinks of rioting? People are so quick to run out and go do crime, do violence. God says, I hate it. A false witness that speaketh lies. When they, when when the, when the high priest sought witnesses to lie about Jesus, there is God standing there. Here comes these people, and they said many came, and many could not agree with each other. Imagine God standing there listening to it, like I hate that. And for whatever reason, if you have told a story that's not the truth, you lied. That's a false witness. And he that sows discord among the brethren, and we got that over here, back over here we read, the first place it showed up, the only two places, the forward is his heart, he de devises mischief, Continually, he soweth dis discord. Discord is disagreement. It's it's disputes. It's arguing. You go around and start an argument. And God says through, the, through Solomon, among the brethren, if you're out there causing trouble in church split, God hates it. Now notice how in this list of what God hates, the lying tongue and the false witness, twice the lie shows up. Out of the seven things, two of them about your lies. And yet, Baptists lie all the time. And it's a shame. But again, I guess, I guess I don't read the Old Testament. It's, it's boring. Plain and simple. 